Ever wondered how a robot would hold up in a boxing match? Well, you can actually see it happening before your own eyes in Beijing in the world's first ever World Humanoid Robot Games. But that isn't the craziest of what I'm about to show you today. The world of technology has stopped taking baby steps and instead started running. And I'm not kidding. This week, humanoid robots took part in multiple activities like racing and even sorting medical items and picking up trash, serving as a robot convention with a sporty spin. However, these robots weren't your usual athletes, since they seemed to like the floor more than winning and face-planted in front of the audience multiple times. Thankfully, embarrassment isn't coded into their software. 280 teams from 16 countries participated in this event to show off their work, and it's safe to say it was worth watching. A programmer even stated that by 2050, humanoid robots can be better at football than his very own idol, Ronaldo. The robots have more flexible joints and realistically can be coded to reach peak performance very soon. If parts break, they can just switch them out? Well, that is still a fantasy because one of the first events on Friday, the day the event kicked off, was football. These tiny child-sized robots went head-to-head -head for chances at the goal, but more often than not fell. In unison. However, that may have been the most realistic part, like this commenter stated. Couldn't be more realistic. Even the robot soccer players are falling and faking their injuries. A sight truly worth seeing. Onlookers also noted the way the robot robots ran in the 400-meter race and made funny little quips. One online user commented on the lack of a victory dance, saying, No huggings or trophy, straight to the charger. I mean, so would I if I had no sentience. Unitry and Exhumanoid emerged as the biggest winners in the games, winning 11 total medals, four of which were gold. The firm's H1 robots seemed to be taking the crown and showed their skills by scoring the golds in four track events like the 400-meter dash, the 1500-meter race, the 100-meter hurdles, and even the 4x100-meter sprint relay. This event wasn't simply for entertainment. It was to show the world what China had already achieved in robotics so far and to, most importantly, set the scene for their upcoming plan to lead the world in the field of robotics. One of the biggest launches in robotics this year isn't even a robot. It's an operating system by OpenMind, a company founded by Stanford's biomedical engineering professor Jan Lippard. OpenMind has unveiled OM1, a platform designed to change how robots learn, work, and communicate. Think of it as Android for machines. Instead of programming each robot separately, line by painful line, companies can run everything on the same brain. That means a warehouse bot, a robotic dog, and even a humanoid assistant could all share the same intelligence. Updates happen once, then get across to every robot on the network. It's fast, largely scalable, and way less of a coding nightmare. But OM1 isn't just about convenience. It comes with something called Fabric, a communication layer that lets the robots share what they learn. If one warehouse robot figures out a quicker way to stack items, another robot on the other side of the world can instantly copy that skill. It's essentially a hive mind for machines. There's great advantages to it. Knowledge isn't capped, and all robots can simultaneously get better and serve us better. It basically allows robots to make decisions in real time and learn from their surroundings. Sounds great, right? Well, that kind of network has a catch. Security and privacy. If you're like me, we can take a trip down memory lane and remember Skynet. A system which is open could be a hacker's playground, and until it's battle-tested in the real world, those joyriding possibilities are pretty high with probable negative impacts. Open Mind isn't staying small, though, and as long as it grows much larger, the funding will definitely help counter these issues. The company, founded by former Google and Tesla engineers, just raised $20 million led by Pantera Capital, with Coinbase Ventures also backing the round. But that's not all. Their first 10 units of the OM1-powered robotic dogs are set to ship in September, with a large rollout planned for October. This will be the first taste of this new innovation, and let's see how they fare. The real gamble is whether an open ecosystem like this can outpace proprietary systems from giants like Tesla, Figure AI, or Boston Dynamics. If it works, OM1 could completely flip the balance of power in robotics. If it stumbles, it might only strengthen the case for keeping everything locked down. Other than slightly ugly robo-dogs having innovative operating systems, we also have a cheaper humanoid robot that leaves Unitree's new R1 in the dirt, according to Price. But is it really just as good? 
Let's see the robot in question, Engine AI's SAO2. It's not a six-foot factory monster or a futuristic soldier. Nope, this thing is just 1.25 meters tall, 25 kilos light, and built to actually live with you. To be fair, since it's pretty compact, I don't think it would be an issue. Think less, Terminator more, roommate who never forgets to charge their phone, or more like themselves. And the price? around $5,300, which, yeah, is still a chunk of cash, but in humanoid land, that's practically a bargain. For context, Boston Dynamics bots go for six figures. SAO2 costs less than a used Toyota, and realistically, if you are shopping around for a robot, this price does change the story. Don't let its size fool you, though. It's rocking 26 degrees of freedom, which is robotic nerd speak for it can move like a human, not like a stiff action figure. Dual HD cameras, quality speakers, and here's the kicker, a built-in language model that lets it actually hold a conversation instead of just spitting out canned lines. So if you're aiming to find a friend to talk to, it's here. However, visuals-wise, it's probably not the prettiest out there, with comments highlighting its appearance. One user said, it's like a silver C-3PO. Engine AI is clearly aiming this at the younger, tech-savvy crowd, not a factory floor or a hospital wing. They're selling the idea of a robot with emotional presence, a kind of hybrid between a digital companion and a physical helper. But that's what makes the SAO2 interesting. It's not trying to beat humans at parkour or boxing like a pro fighter, like the ones we saw at Beijing earlier. Rather, it's trying to be your everyday sidekick, lightweight, affordable, and just human enough to feel like more than a gadget. However, they're not the only ones aiming to market towards people longing for companionship. Companionship AI bots are already climbing the charts, but the real question is, do AI companionship bots make us less lonely or worse? For a lot of people, chatbots and companion robots offer something valuable, a judgment-free space to talk 24-7. How ironic that the man who got married to the virtual wife, Hatsune Miku, was made fun of, but here we are with most people conversing and doing the same. They can also help with loneliness in the short term, especially for people who are isolated. Think elderly users, people with mobility challenges, or anyone stuck at home. A chatbot can reduce feelings of stress and anxiety, at least temporarily. There can also be a training angle. For some, AI companions are like a social rehearsal space, a safe way to practice conversation, build confidence, or work through emotions before taking it back into the human world. However, having AI as your therapist can have adverse effects. Here's the tricky part about AI companionship. Studies show that people with smaller social circles are the ones most likely to lean on chatbots as friends. Makes sense, right? But here's the catch. When the people using it don't have strong human support, their overall well-being actually drops. In other words, chatbots might help, but they're not a full replacement for real connection. The bond feels real at the moment, but the benefits are limited, and for more isolated or vulnerable users, it could even make things worse. So please, don't try to get romantic with your chatbot, especially since they've been designed for the soft and warmth, just like Fourier's GR3. If you loved Baymax, you'll probably love GR3, especially since it's so aesthetically pleasing. Its soft touch exterior and warm, neutral tones create a friendly and approachable presence. The Fourier GR3 is designed with a focus on human-centered service. Standing at 165 centimeters tall and weighing 71 kilograms, it features 55 degrees of freedom, much more than the SAO2, allowing for balanced and natural movement. No uncanny valley effect to be seen here, folks. The robot is equipped with Fourier's proprietary full perception multimodal interaction system, integrating clear vision and audio. As nice as it looks, one user commented that it looks like a decapitated head sitting upside down in a bowl. Unfortunately, once you see it, you really can't unsee it. This system enables GR3 to engage in meaningful interactions across diverse real-world settings, from public services and academic research to clinical use and personal spaces. The robot's capabilities make it suitable for applications such as mobility support, health monitoring, rehabilitation, and clinical settings. Honestly, I'd love to have this little guy take care of my chores. He looks so adorable. But there's one downside, like this user pointed out. A robot which helps in the household does not need to be soft, cute, or humanoid. It needs to be reliable, fast, and sturdy. It will get dirty, so I need to be able to hose it in the backyard. 
But having approachable robots is part of a bigger picture and really pushes the world to think about embodied AI. What if your self-appointed AI therapist took the shape of a cuddly robot like GR3. When people talk about trillion-dollar technologies, the first guesses are usually flying cars, space tourism, or maybe brain-computer interfaces. But China is making a very different bet. Embodied intelligence. AI that doesn't just think in the cloud, but takes physical form in robots that move, build, carry, and even interact with us face-to-face. -face. An analyst is even projecting that embodied intelligence could swell into a 24.7 trillion yuan market by 2050, which translates to roughly 3.4 trillion US dollars. China is already leading the charge today, accounting for about 27% of the global embodied AI market. That means while much of the world is still debating whether humanoid robots are hype or reality, China is already running to get their hands on it. I mean, with that amount of scaling capability, can you blame them? But what does embodied AI actually mean on the ground? It's actually showing up everywhere, from factories where robotic arms and mobile bots are used in speeding up assembly lines, to elder care facilities where assistive robots help with mobility and companionship. In fact, there are even more experimental use cases, like emotional support or household tasks. Instead of treating robots as niche gadgets, the government and private sector are treating them as the next industrial revolution. That's why Beijing has launched long-term initiatives, blending national policy with venture capital, to make sure China doesn't just participate in the robotics race, it defines it, or at least tries to do it faster than other countries. However, only time will tell whether these attempts will be successful or not. But guess what? There are countries trying to set the direction for this growth. Let me introduce NVIDIA. If you've ever wondered how humanoid robots learn to walk without falling every two steps, or how they generate fluid hand movements while keeping track of language instructions, the answer often runs through NVIDIA's GPUs. They may be making graphics cards, but they're also building up the tower of machine intelligence, especially for robots. Talk about caring. In March 2025, NVIDIA announced Isaac Groot N1, billed as the world's first open foundation model for humanoid reasoning and motor skills. That's a mouthful, even for me, but here's the simple version. It's like giving robots a massive digital gym where they can practice endless scenarios before ever being switched on in the real world. They can stumble, fall, recalibrate, and learn virtually. Kind of like how you stumbled as a baby before learning to walk. But the major upside is saving companies years of trial and error and, just as important, millions in hardware costs. At the center of this training ecosystem is NVIDIA's Newton physics engine paired with their synthetic data pipelines. To cut fancy terminology, the engine simulates real-world dynamics like gravity, collisions, pressure. So robots don't just learn theory, they practice under conditions that mirror reality. NVIDIA's CEO has been very direct about the stakes, calling robotics a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. And interestingly, he's not banking on humanoid assistants folding laundry or entertaining your kids as the main prize, though I'd argue that is the real trophy. The gold mine lies in industrial automation and warehouses, places where robots can quietly transform logistics and supply chains. Think fewer sci-fi servants, more invisible laborers working behind the scenes to power the global economy. The irony is that the robots people get most excited about, those that look and act human, might just be the flashy mascots. The real revolution could be rolling pallets, sorting packages, and handling repetitive labor at a scale that humans simply can't match. Another major application of humanoid robots is in the military. Governments around the world are exploring how these machines can reduce human risk in defense operations. For example, the U.S. Department of Defense, through DARPA, is testing humanoid robots for logistics and medical support, tasks like carrying supplies, transporting equipment, and assisting injured soldiers. That means fewer humans in dangerous zones, which could be a real game changer. One way this potential was explored is through the DARPA Robotics Challenge. While not exclusively military-focused, it aimed to create robots capable of handling complex, hazardous tasks like disaster response that could easily overlap with battlefield logistics or emergency medical support. Beyond the field, research has also looked at humanoid robots performing delicate medical procedures in hospital settings, showing that their skills can translate across environments. After all this, one thing is for sure. Humanoid robots aren't just in sci-fi movies anymore. They're becoming practical tools that could reshape 
everything. However, do you think the change will be as drastic as every company seems to claim? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.